Well, hello. So if you saw my recent casting video, you may have noticed I'm not very good. <laughs> oh my God. So in order to improve on my casting, we're gonna tackle a hokey King of Random style project, if you will. We're gonna make a vacuum chamber. We're gonna try and keep this thing as cheap as possible. And for the vacuum pump, we're gonna try and use this old fridge compressor. And the chamber itself will just be a cheap pot that I found at Goodwill. So, let's start prepping the acrylic. And what we're gonna do here, we're gonna drill a hole in the middle and then screw this down to a piece of wood to where the whole thing can pivot. And then we're gonna stick it on the mill, mill out a slot that we can fill with silicone as our seal and then mill the rest of it around. Uh, who'd I ever guess I don't have a single two by four laying around. So this is our two by four. I think that'll work. Now we see, does it line up? Oh yeah! So to make my seal, I'm just using red RTV silicone. You might be saying, you don't need red. That's for high heat, but I use this stuff for everything, man. I guess I just have an affinity for the red. The blue doesn't feel like it does anything. Job done. We can start figuring out how the compressor works. Well, ain't nothing to do but to hook it up and see if it runs. Let's do this. Oh, that is free on. Off on. Yeah, that'll kill me. I feel I need to interject here. That was not Freon. That was the oil from within the unit. I got the unit as is from the scrapyard and I can only assume that the Freon was disposed of responsibly. Please don't arrest me. Well, that was fun. Let's put a vacuum gauge on this and see how much of a vacuum we can pull. Let's give it a test. So 23 seems to be the upper end of this thing's capabilities, but if I ever do find that I need a better vacuum, I can always replace the pump. Woo! All right, now that that's sorted, we're gonna try something a little funny. We're gonna try and weld this fitting into this pot. All right, here goes nothing. You know, I recently did a lot of stainless steel TIG welding and I, I was excited to show off my new skills, but this happened. <laughs> As you can probably tell, I had the amperage a little too high when I started and I just got a gaping hole here. So 90% of the weld was just trying to patch that up and man, did it get chunky. But I made sure to fill all the pinholes. It should be airtight. All right, now we can put all our plumbing parts together. Like so. So, we've got our two ball valves. This will open it up to the environment if I need to break the vacuum in a hurry. We got our vacuum gauge here. This ball valve, I can cut off the pump from the system. And then this goes to a compression fitting that'll fit right on the 5 16th copper that's sticking out of the fridge compressor. So I'm gonna install all this stuff just to get an idea where it's all gonna sit. And I'll use that to start cutting my case. All right, so we got our sheet marked for the case. Let's get it cut out. Before we fold this box up, we're gonna weld some square tube in there. 
to keep the top of the pan above the top of the compressor. Then to mount the compressor itself, there's these braces that were in the fridge that are already bolted on there. We're just gonna weld those in place and we'll still be able to remove it if need be, but then we don't have to fiddle around with making brackets. If I'm smart, I'll bend up the front first. And I can stick this guy in, figure out exactly where this hole is gonna go. Drill that hole out. So now, if we can line this up, we can figure out exactly where this hole goes. So as you can tell, I've had a rough time getting this copper into the right spot. So, I'm gonna just use a hose. All right, so it's all plumbed in. Before I fold it up, I wanna test it. No surprises here. Got this temporary plug in here. Let's shut this valve and give it a test. It's working. Seems to be working pretty quick. I feel like I should have safety glasses on. Oh my God. Boy, am I happy I had safety glasses on. I think I need to go to the hospital. Well, that was sketchy. But if we learned anything from that, we learned that it works. I think we're good to finish building it and we need a better piece of material <laughs> as our cover here. So we can fold this case up, install our switch, install our plug, keep this thing rolling. That's it for the wiring, just a switch to the compressor. Easy. And I've gone ahead and I zip tied a little piece of fabric to the outlet of this thing. That way I'm not losing all the oil through the outlet. I have this piece, which I cut out on the plasma cutter and I way over cut it. That way we can mark it, cut it with a grinder and we know that it's gonna sit on there just perfect. Oh, and while I was at the plasma cutter, gotta cut a sign, obviously. All right, that fits pretty good. Now we gotta add our mounting system, which will just be some coupling nuts welded in the corners and the top will be held on with machine screws. All right, the old Suckboy 9000 is officially put together. Now we're just a paint job, a new top, and a gasket away from a complete product. I went ahead and ordered this three quarter inch thick sheet of acrylic for the top. So hopefully this one won't implode. And on this one, I'm not going to add my notch in the bottom. I'm just going to use the full piece because I want to leave as much meat here as possible because that implosion was absolutely terrifying. So let's get this guy painted, then we can start making a gasket for the acrylic. All right, it's all painted up. Now we're just going to make the gasket again. For this, we're pulling one right out of the King of Randoms playbook and making some proto putty. So to make this you start with some silicone and you got to make sure that it's silicone type 1. If I was smart I'd have put cornstarch in the bottom of this before doing anything but we all know I'm not smart. Then add some food coloring and the idea is that the water in the food coloring will activate the silicone and start the curing process so then we only got 15 minutes work time or whatever. I really got to invest in some popsicle sticks. Then just start adding cornstarch until you can work it by hand. Alright, now we're going to just take our dough and press it down on the lip of our pan. I'm not too worried about getting this even. I'm hoping that I can trim this all down once it's cured. I've lubed this whole thing up with Vaseline so it doesn't stick to the silicone. 
Now we can just use the lid to push this all down until we see it's making contact fairly evenly all the way around. And that's that. Now we wait. All right, the old Suckboy 9000 is ready to go. Now why don't we christen this off with the obligatory marshmallow test. Looks like we've gotten up to about 27 inches of mercury now, so we're doing a little better than our initial test. Now, for the fun part. Look at that. I call that a success. Wow. I think this thing turned out pretty good. Works pretty good. Looks pretty good. I'm happy with this build. Now the hole on the top here is tapped a quarter inch NPT, so one, I can hook a hose up to this and I can pull a vacuum into something else if that's what I need to do. Two, I can remove the plug, make a high temperature gasket here and put my mold on top to do some vacuum casting. So I think this thing's gonna serve me pretty well. So if you like what you saw here, leave a thumbs up, maybe subscribe and Thank you for watching.